Hi all, I have another fascinating encounter between Leela and Stockfish to show you today. So this is in the Chesscom Rapid Redux stage three, 30 minutes with a five second increment. And let's see what happened. D4 from Leela, the opening book given is the Nimzo Indian, so Knight C3, not shying away from uh, the proper Nimzo Indian, allowing the pin. A lot of modern grandmasters go into Queen's Indian territory playing Knight F3 uh, nowadays. But Knight C3 was chosen here as part of the book. Bishop B4, classic Nimzo. And here is the end of the book. And Leela actually chooses Knight F3. We have Stockfish voluntarily giving up the Bishop pair, immediately taking on C3 and playing D6. So it seems Stockfish is up to a dark square strategy here, maybe playing for E5 later. So Queen C2, Black Castles, Bishop G5, B6, E3, Bishop B7. Now, very interesting already, Knight D2. So keeping uh, more control over the E4 square. But how is White, by not shielding G2, going to castle Kingside? Or will White castle Queenside? Let's see what happens. H6, Bishop H4, Rook E8. Very interesting move now, Bishop D3, so volunteering the G2 pawn. However, from a human perspective, would you actually want to take this pawn? Because surely this G file is dangerous for black. Stockfish does actually take... Is this greedy? Is this greedy? Intuitively, visually, it looks scary for the black king a little bit. Rook G1, Bishop C6. We have now f4 clamping down against e5. Black played king h8 here. If e5, it seems white can take f takes e5 and then play d5. And here now knight e4 is dangerous. So immediately putting more pressure on f6. And if knight bd7, queen g2 is very strong. And black is in big trouble in this position. Uh, for example, g5, knight takes g5. This is shredding the black king or leaving a very powerful uh, pin on f6 now. And it's difficult to parry the pressure on the dark squares. So black ends up getting destroyed in this variation. Absolutely destroyed. So not advisable uh, to play e5, it seems. Quite a long forcing sequence could result in that g-file being celebrated along with the pin on f6. So we have king h8, white castles queenside, knight bd7, and still here playing knight e4 now. And this seems to get the bishop pair, the light square bishop from black. Black volunteers that with bishop takes e4. So a little bit of a concession because black has already weakened itself on the light square. So losing that light square bishop could result in some sort of positional bind, you'd think. Uh, but what is the alternative? If rook b8, knight takes f6, knight takes, and now e4 with the big threat of e5. If black plays e5, again, we're back to queen g2, hitting g7, threatening mate. If the rook's lured to g8, this position, d takes, f takes, is very nice after g5, bishop f2, the knight moves, bishop d4. Very, very pleasant for white indeed. Big advantage here for white. So uh, black volunteers that bishop, so a bit of a concession. Bishop takes e4, rook b8. So if nothing else, although there's a, a seemingly promising g-file, if nothing else also, white has the bishop pair. The light squares have already been compromised by Stockfish earlier, and this looks like a positional bind in its own right. And with technical components of two pins, to celebrate. So <clears throat> Nimzovich classed pins slightly differently to ordinary tactics because pins can be a long term thing. So in a way it can be part of creating uh, prophylaxis for one's position. If you can create pins against the opponent, you're immobilizing uh, them for potentially a number of moves. We have here Rook G8. So black does seem to be a bit stuck in this position with limited counterplay, although a pawn up. That was the price paid. E4. Now this looks nasty, E5, so unpinning with Queen C8. E5 anyway, and now the knight's on the rim. A knight on the rim is dim as they say. 
it does seem to be attacking f4 this does seem to be just protected g6 is played now queen a4 here uh, maybe g6 was played in light well the, the knight is a bit uh, wobbly so in light of the knight stabilizing the knight and it's a bit of a concession again on the dark squares queen a4 hitting this knight and also the a7 pawn black plays b5 so a counter pawn sacrifice on knight f8 it seems white could cheekily just play queen takes a7 without any penalty white's got a big advantage here with that bishop pair so we have b5 and there's an interesting idea d5 to try and at least get a knight to c4 we have queen a3 knight b6 now the queen goes in is it really threatening queen takes f7 black ignored that with a5 interesting position we have an amazing move here but before we go into the seemingly amazing move if queen takes f7 why not black plays queen f8 and actually it seems as though black has a stable enough position here say white even plays energetically with a f5 black's position seems stable enough maybe white's got a small advantage but it's difficult uh to show anything more than a small advantage at the moment anyway so uh we have actually instead of taking on f7 a much more dynamic looking move c4 what is this about so the pawn can be taken two ways uh so we have knight takes c4 on d takes c4 it seems f5 is interesting for example e takes d5 the central pawn mobility is there and with d5 now this diagonal is more dangerous so any bishop rerouting is more significant uh, or here maybe bouncing the bishop here onto this diagonal is more significant after d5 is played uh, so for example c3 e6 takes bishop e1 hitting c3 and black's in a critical position here after knight a4 queen h4 and now the threat of queen takes a4 and if say queen f8 this is not looking too good but if the knight uh, moves back then this is looking horrible as well white is uh, crashing through here for example rook takes g6 and crashing through it's uh, winning okay so there's a very dangerous continuations it seems here on uh, d takes c4 f5 so we looked at e takes f5 on g takes f5 it seems white can play queen takes because that now hits the knight and this is just horrendous just taking the knight black has a few checks the king goes over here finds safety in fact it seems and white should be winning this end game quite comfortably <clears throat> only so knight takes c4 was played very very interesting very dynamic move c4 and now f5 we have now e takes f5 which weakens d5 but if g takes then actually here bishop f6 may be very strong like this uh, for example and now bishop d7 and now taking and now taking here black's falling to bits a bit and white ends up with a big advantage here so uh yeah e takes f5 which weakens d5 and now queen takes going back to take d5 soon rook g7 queen takes d5 and that seems to go into a fork but leader doesn't care because it seems white has central pawn mobility for the sacrifice of the exchange plus the bishop pair here which they complement for each other's blind spots the bishop pair of course but together with the central pawns this looks very positionally promising visually crushing you might say a4 that's ignored and uh, we have a focus on these central pawns queen f8 yeah it looks as though queen a3 could be a nuisance that's ignored it's allowed bishop e1 just to go on to this diagonal or this diagonal <coughs> croaky voice this diagonal or c3 check we have queen h3 rook f2 queen e3 queen c3 not minding the exchange of queens black rejects d5 queen g1 queen e3 king h7 bishop c3 rook e7 and now finally the pawns push e6 look at this magnificent dark square bishop 
Black's rooks are tied up. This looks devastating, really. F4, we have white volunteering again, the exchange of queens. Black obliges. If Stockfish plays queen g5, queen e4, this position shows that the e pawn is extremely dangerous. It will be winning material, especially with b6 to create two connected pass pawns, is a ni nice trick. Position e2, underline the pass central pawn mobility, and then white ends up technically winning material soon after. So the queens were taken off here. Bishop takes g5. Bishop b4, critical diagonal to take over for e7. Now after knight f6, this is unfortunate with this horrible pen. And black gives up material, rook takes e7. If rook f7, white can take on f6 and then queen. And being a bishop up here is good enough for a winning endgame. So this is also very good though, of course. The two bishops against a rook. Now b6 played here. So yeah, clearly takes, we take the rook. So rook takes, bishop e8. Yes, that was a nice little tactic to win an exchange to leave white basically a bishop up for a few pawns. Bishop takes here. We have now takes, bishop takes f7. Yeah, this was looks even better than taking the rook uh, to smash black's pawn structure up. Uh, so you know, with either his bishop e three check potentially. So this looks very good now. Black's pawns are totally fragmented. Four different pawn islands. So the bishop should have an easier time of it here versus its counterpart pawns. So Black's only got a pawn for the piece at the moment. A three. We have now rook b two being threatened. The king moves out of the way. Rook f six. Check. Okay, so it's two pawns for a bishop. Check, 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 rook a5. And now rook takes a3 is possible. Check, that protects the f3 bishop, of course. Rook d3, and now white has a passed a pawn to push. So the passed pawn is starting to be pushed. Now, this looks like it's a technique win style position now it doesn't look as though there's too much resistance able to be offered by stockfish here and yeah Leela is making the a pawn uh, a winning feature here so this is really uh end of game now so i'm just showing you these moves just for the record now what is Leela's technique like here bit of torture first before going in uh, black eventually just gives up the rook here and then yeah the moves yeah technically the game carried on <laughs> still yeah the game carried on uh typical leela trolling giving up bishop here okay and still winning just rounding up the king <laughs> eventually <laughs> yes we have some uh Strange end game technique being demonstrated by Leela in this tournament. But the win is pretty guaranteed here. Eventually the king comes in to help the rook. And now pretty efficiently restricting the king. In fact, for for a bit there. Checkmate. And this makes it at the moment, at the time of uh, this video, it's like 5-4 in the virtual match between Leela and Stockfish at CCC. So Leela's putting up some resistance. The other engines are just getting smashed. Komodo and Houdini are just getting smashed to smithereens by Stockfish. Leela is the only one with a kind of near level score. A load of draws, but on the decisive games, it's 5-4 at the moment. So Stockfish still technically better than this version of Leela uh, being played at the CC see at the moment i uh, hope you enjoyed this game video got a few instructive points from it let's see in recap the pawn sacrifice pretty dynamic it actually accumulated a positional advantage of the bishop pair indirectly when 94 was played black had to give up it seems the light square bishop and there was also then emphasized it seems the central pawn mobility with that amazing c5 pawn sack move 
so the central pool mobility with the bishop pair, White was inviting basically the exchange of queens, not not being scared of any endgame scenarios. And in fact, yeah, it was able to get two bishops for a rook later because of a nasty pin. And then with another interesting pawn move was uh, winning the exchange back so to leave a bishop up, rook and bishop versus rook ending, which was made easier to convert by first fragmenting the pawns technically, uh, leaving black with multiple pawn islands and the bishop was quite easily triumphant there. So yeah, I hope you got something for, from it for your own games, maybe to to be more experimental dynamically with pawn sacrifices. Uh, if you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly. You can become a member at chessworld.net, play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis uh, of these games in advance from the improved menu, Learn for the Masters YouTube order button. Full members at Chessworld can export PGN. And soon also I'll be creating um, puzzles around these games as well to test. So uh, becoming a full member, you won't miss out on these perks. Uh, comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe with the notification bell. Really appreciated. Thanks very much.